Okay, now we're going to move on to the, what we call a coordinate point definition of the trig functions. We have the uh, opposite adjacent hypotenuse definitions, uh, but now let's look at um, coordinate point definitions. So here's kind of how we're going to build this up. Um, Okay, so I have an x, y axis. Um, we've got some line here which forms an angle theta. Um, and then let's say we've got some point out here on the line. We'll call this just an x comma y point. Okay, that point out in space on this x, y axis can drop straight down um, and construct a right triangle, right? Um, right triangle where the distance across the x axis is x units, the distance vertically is y units, that gets me to that point x comma y. Um, the length here on the line, let's call this length here R, as we can think of it as being able to kind of map out the radius of a circle that would travel all the way around here. Okay, so we'll just call it use R. Okay, so here's our, our coordinate point definitions. Um, the sine of this angle theta instead of calling it opposite divided by hypotenuse, we can call it y divided by r. Uh, the cosine of theta, instead of calling it adjacent over hypotenuse, we can call it x over r. And the tangent, instead of opposite or adjacent, can be the y over x. Cosecant, secant, and cotangent are just the reciprocals. So r over y, r over x, x over y. Okay. There are your coordinate point definitions uh, for your trig functions. Uh, so we're defining sine, cosine, tangent, all six of these, essentially based on this x, y point. Um, think of the exercise we just did with the unit circle. Lots of x, y points around the whole thing. If we know all those points around the whole unit circle, then we can come up with any trig function value for any of those points on the circle. That's kind of where we're going with this. Okay, directions say evaluate without using a calculator. Um, cosine of 120. Um, now, I'll tell you this before we get started, really. Um, have the unit circle out. What we just did a couple slides ago, um, have that, those notes sitting in front of you. Uh, cosine of 120 degrees. We just said on the last slide that cosine is defined to be the x over the r. Okay. Um, let's recall here real quick that this is a unit circle. Therefore, the r is equal to 1. So if it's x over r and r is 1, then it's really x over 1, so it's just x. In other words, the cosine of 120 degrees is just the x value of the point at 120 degrees. So look at your circle, find 120 degrees, find the x value, and you'll find that it's negative one half. Okay. Let's just go across here. The tangent of 300, tangent we define to be y over x. And there's no reducing that. Um, but I can find the tangent of 300 by going to 300 degrees, find the point, and take the y value of the point, divided by the x value of the point, 
and then simplifying that. Twos would cancel, so I'm left with negative square root of three over one. So the tangent of 300 degrees is equal to negative square root of three. Okay. Um, cosecant, three pi over four. Um, there's two ways that we can, can, can think of this. Um, I'm gonna think instead of cosecant, I'm gonna think to myself, sign. Um, the cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So let's think sine. Sine we said was the y divided by r which is just going to be the y. Again because r is 1 so it goes away. So I need the y value of the point at 3 pi over 4. So find 3 pi, 3 pi over 4. Okay, if you found it, you'll notice that the y value of that point is square root of 2 over 2. Now, if I wanted the sine of 3 pi over 4, I'd be done. But I don't. I want the cosecant of 3 pi over 4. So I don't want this. I want the reciprocal of this. So take that fraction and reciprocate it. Okay, so it goes to 2 over square root of 2. Uh, bring up that radical, so we get 2 square root of 2 over 2, reduce it out, we get square root of 2. Okay, um, sine of 13 pi over 6, it's the sine, sine is y divided by r, which is just y. I need the y value of the point at 13 pi over 6. So find 13 pi over 6. And when you took it, look at, do that, you look at it, you start counting out the 6. Actually, let me even bring back my circle for this, just to help us out. Um, 13 pi over 6. There is no 13 pi over 6 written down here. You know, if I go, it goes 1, 6, 2, 6, 3, 6, 4, 6, 5, 6, etc. I got up to 11 over 6. And then was, next was 12 over 6. Well, what comes after 12 is 13 over 6. So 13 pi over 6 lands at the exact same spot at the circle, has the exact same point on the circle as pi over 6. Okay, so that's the one we're after right there. Now let's go back to our actual problem that we're doing. We want the sine of 13 pi over 6. Well, that's just the y value of the point at pi over 6, which is just a half. Okay, next, cotangent 13 pi over 4. Uh, cotangent is the x divided by the y. Okay, so 13 pi over 4. We have to find it. We're going to have to count up just like we did and count past a full circle just like we did this one, but count on the fourths. Okay, I'll even bring it back so we can see how to do it exactly. Okay, so counting out to 13 pi over 4. Here's 1 fourth. 2 fourths, 3 fourths, 4 fourths, 5 fourths, 6 fourths, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13 pi over 4 is right there. There's its x and its y. Okay, so let's bring back our problem. Uh, it's x, it's negative square root of 2 over 2. It's y is negative square root of 2 over 2. We've got the same number divided by itself. That reduces very simply to 1. Piece of cake. Okay, last one. Sine of 11 pi over 3. 11 pi over 3, it, well first of all it's sine which is y divided by r, which is just going to be the y value. So I need the y coordinate of the point at 11 pi over 3. Okay, I will bring that back again so we can do it together. 11 pi over 3, so the thirds are right here. They're every 60 degrees. So here's one third, two thirds, three thirds, four thirds, 
five thirds, six thirds, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven thirds. Eleven thirds is the same as five pi over three. And we want the y value of the point. So the y value of that point is negative square root of 3 over 2. And that's it. Uh, with a little bit of practice, a little bit of memorization, um, just because we'll drill it so much in class that you will have to no doubt memorize this, uh, really in a matter of a week or two, you'll be able to do all these problems and problems just like this, um, just in a matter of seconds. The, the information on the circle will come to you so clearly and you'll have it so well memorized that they'll just become a piece of cake, really.